Welcome back to the Traders Network. I'm Michael Yorba, your host. Thanks for joining us. We're also streaming to you live on yorbamedia.com. All right, my guest this segment, Gareth Soloway. He's a president and CFO, a chief market strategist of In the Money Stocks. Gareth, why, uh, welcome to the show. Hey, thank you, Michael. Pleasure to be here. Happy holidays to you and your listeners. All right, back at you. All right, Gareth, uh, we've got a litany of things to talk about with you today, but but before we get into all of the, uh, the the nuances of what's going on with the market, let's slow down a little bit and talk about InTheMoneyStocks.com and why you started the company. Well, I started the company just to give you a little background. Um, basically, I grew up with a very, very poor family. You know, we didn't have much. And I never had exposure to investing or the stock market whatsoever until I got into high school. My parents didn't invest. They didn't have the money to do so. And in high school, I was exposed to it through what you know, many of you guys, probably your listeners, have experienced, the investment club. And from that point on, I was hooked. Uh, I went to college. I traded through the tech bubble. I was trading during class, during everything. You know, any spare time, I was in my room trading if the markets were open. And the profits started to flow. And I started to read emotion and realize emotion is the key to everything in the markets. You know, a lot of people talk about fundamentals, uh, technicals. Um, if you look at technicals, it's really mirroring emotional reaction. And from that point, I was able to, you know, have spending money in college, buy myself a new Mustang, all that kind of stuff. And that took me to the point where after college, I said, you know, trading, investing, this is the life for me. And I started trading for myself. I just went into an office, and that's where I met my partner, Nick, my current partner now. And at that point, we got together, and we started trading and analyzing. And at night, we would be discussing charts nonstop, hours on end. And we started to come up with this methodology, this strategy called the PPT. And from that point on, essentially what we did was we traded in the office while everyone else around us was losing money trading their own way. We started to profit. And it was sad because... You know, a lot of these average investors that were trading out of the office, you know, they were just, they weren't wealthy. They were just kind of trying to make a living. And the institutions have put it in, a, in effect where they have these computer programs, I mean, black box trading programs, high frequency trading, and they have it so essentially the little guy has almost no chance of making money. So we decided at that point in time, we said, listen, we need to do this. We have the skills here. We have the methodology. I'd love to open it up. And again, you know, my parents being teachers, Growing up in a poor household, I think I kind of connected through that way and brought it all full circle around. What PPT? What does what do those initials mean? The PPT methodology, or PPT, is or stands for price, pattern, and time. So again, if you look at a chart, any chart, it could be a daily chart, a weekly chart, monthly, intraday, or you know, it could be currencies, it could be commodities, or just a stock or an ETF. What you can see on there is an exact price. There are patterns that you need to recognize, and there are times. And those are all formulations of emotion through the trading. You know, for instance, when you're trading a stock, you're not really trading the company. Most average investors think they're trading a company. But what you're really trading is the emotional reaction of the world or everyone that's trading that stock on what they think. So, again, if they're greedy, everyone thinks, oh, it's going up. When Apple was at 700 you know, there was so much greed. Analysts were upgrading it to a 1,000 price target. Here, our methodology was telling us, wait a minute, there's something wrong here. This is going to come back in. So, again, it stands for price, pattern, and time, and, again, represents emotion. It actually has an 80 to 90% success rate when you look back at the calls that we have been making for our members. Over what period of time? That's since our inception, which is 2007, uh, when we started the company. That's quite a winning percentage over that period of time. I mean, that's yes, and, hard to beat that. What, what you'll see is, is that we're, we're, we basically look for this methodology in the charts, and if we don't see it, we don't take the trade. So, you know, some people out there, some of these, you know, memberships, they, they think, oh, well, if I don't get 10 trades a day, I don't want to do it. Bottom line is, we don't take a trade if we don't have the setup. It's so disciplined. And by being disciplined, you avoid Wall Street hype. You avoid all the craziness out there, the media, the Kramers, the everything where it's getting you pumped up or pumped down. And it just lets you focus purely on the trade. Yeah, well, I've seen so many good trades out of Nick since he's been on our show that that I know that they come with from you too. That it's just been amazing, amazing trades out of you guys. But let's let's take some of that uh, that, that PPT strategy and apply it to uh, what we're doing now. What's going on now? 
uh, one of the top things that's been on everybody's uh, checklist to talk about has been the fiscal cliff. Is, is there any insights that this strategy is giving you about the resolution of the fiscal cliff? The, the methodology is actually giving us the insight of being a question mark, and this is the great thing about it is, you know, if, if I had a date specific that I could say the fiscal cliff will be solved, I'd be putting my members and myself all in. But what we're seeing in the charts is that there's uncertainty. There's no price pattern or time factors just yet. Therefore, it tells us to stay cautious, which makes sense, because if you think about it, you know, you don't know. No one's out there saying, well, they're going to reach an agreement on this specific day. So that uncertainty, again, leads me to believe that over the next, you know, few days into the new year, we'll probably stay a little weak until we see some sort of indication of a deal. And again, of course, you'll get the politicians coming out and pumping their chests and saying, oh, we might have something. I think I think recently, just today, the House is going to reconvene on Sunday. The markets have come drastically off their lows. That's going to continue. But until you have an agreement, the markets should stay choppy to weak. And then again, once you get this agreement, I think we'll get a major one to three day push. Obviously, the first day being the big one, you know, 300 points on the Dow or so, uh, followed which, and this is the interesting part, is that I think once we see this massive move up, which is a short-term move, I think the markets will actually become weak again. And the part from that that I believe about the weakness comes from understanding that regardless of what happens with the fiscal cliff, remember the fiscal cliff means taxes go up a certain amount on everyone and so do spending cuts, you know, spending cuts kick in. But whatever deals reached, they're going to be spending cuts and they're going to be tax increases. It's just a matter of how much. So the economy over the next 6 to 12 months is going to see some hurt from that. And I think, again, we have to recognize that. I think a lot of individual investors get so hung up on, oh, they're going to solve the fiscal cliff problem. Well, solving isn't really solving. It's not going to go away. You're just going to make it less of a hurt to the market and the economy. Okay, so choppiness. Uh, I have some cycle points. I've got a little background in cyclical analysis myself. I've got some cycle point coming up today for the, uh, uh, say, the S&P, and another one at the end of the, end of next week. Any insight from you on if I'm, I'm anywhere close to the cycle points that you and Nick use? Yeah, I mean, there, there is an indicator, and it also matches with time frame into the end of the year that says that there could be, I mean, if we're going to get a resolution, it's, you're going to get something over the next couple of days. And obviously, the little reversal off the lows does signal that as well. And we do have a possible pivot there. My only issue is that unless I'm 80 to 90% sure, which is why we have the track record we do, I can't just throw my money in there. And I would never, if I'm not putting my money at risk, I'm never going to tell my members to do the same. So I have, I have myself a little bit of a short on Amazon, which has been working pretty well over the last you know week or so, and uh, a couple small longs. I have some China small longs out there. But, but for the most part, I'm holding back with about 75% cash until we get some sort of signal. And then once we get that signal, I'll be moving much more of my capital into the market. Got it. What about Apple? You brought up some equities. Yeah, Apple, I love Apple um, if it just comes a little bit lower. There's a key pivot at 506. Uh, 506 was the low bottoming tail from the first initial major breakdown that's retested that level since. As long as we stay above that 506, 505 level, then you're looking at possible short-term upside. If you get a close on the day, uh, you know, at the end of the day, if it closes below, then I fear that it should flush to about the 470 to 475 level. 470 to 475 is an amazing level. That's what I'm looking for, ideally. That's where the indicators are telling me 80 to 90% success rate of probably a 50 to 100 point bounce off that level. Okay, we've got about a minute and a half. Real quick, uh, thoughts on gold? Gold, I think, at this point in time, um, it looks like it's it's trying to put a short-term bottom in, but I think next year in 2013 it's going to have much more downside. The one thing about gold that I want everyone to recognize is that you turn on the radio, there's gold ads. You put up, put it in your IRA, do this. When you see that in the media, when it's put it on every medium that you can see, be wary. That's telling you that a lot of the little investors are in. The institutions aren't going to make money when pushing something up when the little investors are in. They need to flush that out and get the little guy to get out, at which point they'll put in a bottom. So what I'm actually thinking is you might see gold flush pretty dramatically next year, and then at that point you'll put in a major pivot low and start to have a bigger move up to the upside, taking out the, uh, the highs over the last year or two. Okay, now a lot of this information we've spoken about today gets expanded in your research center. Real quickly, give us an idea of what goes on in the research center and how our audience can get in touch with you to, to get into that research center. 
Absolutely. Just come to InTheMoneyStocks.com, and you'll find the research center there. We offer a seven-day free trial, so it's very simple. Um, you can just sign up and test it out for seven days. And the key here to the research center, which I'm a big advocate of, is that you know we're not just going to give calls out. We do give calls out. Uh, that's not my favorite part. My favorite part is the teaching side. You know, I want to teach the average investor to fish, not just give them the fish. And again, it's it's each individual investor needs to understand that it's you against the institutions, and the institutions have every asset at their disposal to, to win against as a little investor. So what we need to do is make sure that we're disciplined enough, we understand the markets enough, and make sure that you understand this PPT methodology, which will help you achieve and be on the right side of the trade. Great. We're going to need to leave it there, Gareth, but thanks for coming on the show. Hey, thank you so much. Have a great holiday. My pleasure. You too. Everybody, Gareth Soloway, President, CFO, and Chief Market Strategist at InTheMoneyStocks.com. Coming up next...